Hello to all of our listeners and welcome back once again to The Parent Solution, your one-stop shop for all things educational. I'm your host, Kimberly, and today I'm chatting about ways in which you as a parent or as an educator can help your student or your child to regulate their emotions, not hide them or hide from them, but rather to deal with them in a healthy way. Particularly when it comes to emotional regulation, it's almost like an elusive green dragon uh, for many parents and for many educators in a certain sense. In today's society, and particularly over the past two years, there's been a very critical lack of socio-emotional skill development in children. Um, You don't really need to be anything more than an observant individual to realize how much damage has been done to children's and teens' social and emotional well-being over the past 24 months. Now, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, and I'm definitely not a counselor, um, but I don't need to be an expert to be able to read statistics off of a government website or to speak from experience. Kids are not okay. The masks and social distancing, whatever potentially perceived advantages that they may provide, uh, have absolutely 100% furthered a sense of isolation, a sense of separatism, and it's it's caused a host of communication-related challenges. This has caused a massive inability in both children and teenagers to regulate their own emotions. And the causes of this uh, come from a variety of factors, but the largest contributor is, on an overall scale, the lack of natural and meaningful interaction with others, including those within their own age range. The biggest problem uh, with the lack of regulation in children and young adults is the, the inability to handle intense emotions and feelings. Now, my personal opinion on that one is that the events of the last two years have really been a huge contributor to severe emotional distress, um, as well as the rise of anxiety and depression. And these have always been the two most common mental health challenges. But within the past two years, they have skyrocketed. So how do we attempt to mitigate the damage that's been done? Whether you're a parent or an educator, how do we fix this? How do we attempt to uh, to, to solve this sort of issue um, on a smaller scale? Um, Now, that's a long, long road, uh, but let's start with what you can control immediately, and that is yourself. Teaching children to self-regulate their emotions must means that you must model that behavior to them. That does not mean hiding your emotions. There's a difference between regulating your emotions and hiding them, either from others or from yourself. But emotional regulation for adults is, you know, I think just as hard, if not harder, um, than it is for children. So for the adults wondering how to deal, um, I've got some helpful advice uh, that may provide some insight, particularly uh, for parents. So treat it as a learning experience and grow with your child or your student rather than hiding from them. You have to remember there's no such thing as perfect. You're going to mess up. Um, Nothing needs to be perfect. You just have to be trying. Um, treat every situation as a learning opportunity, you know, and as a chance to grow. Uh, I like to say uh, that, you know, the saying is practice makes perfect. I like to say practice makes progress um, because no one is ever perfect and it's not right to have uh, those sorts of expectations for yourself. Now, in this learning experience, um, effective communication plays a large role in this. And that's my next my next uh, point here is that you have to communicate um, and you have to communicate honestly. So intercommunication and intracommunication is absolutely important here. Um, and I would say it's one of the most crucial pieces for a strong relationship um, between two individuals, um, particularly if you're talking about a parent and a child or an educator and a student. Um, and it's really a uh, communication is really a cornerstone um, of emotional regulation. Remember that your job as a parent or as an educator is to be there for your child or your student and to guide them, but it doesn't mean that you aren't human too or that you can't be honest with them. Now, my third thing uh, is more for parents than for educators. Parents, you've got to find your tribe and you've got to find your child's tribe. Keep in mind, you know, every child is different. Some children are going to need quiet time or alone time. Others are going to need physical or verbal reassurance. And some are going to need physical activity as an outlet. 
But the truth is, no matter what your situation or your child's situation, I promise you that there are other parents and children out there who are feeling the same sorts of feelings and who need the same sort of outlet. Isn't it better done with like-minded individuals? You have to remember that there's no solid solution that's going to work 100% of the time. Again, we, nobody's perfect and we are all just trying to do our best and it's important to be realistic with each other and with ourselves. So the key takeaway that I'd want to leave you with for this episode is that you've got to stop trying to be perfect. Your kids, your students need you as their parent or as their teacher, just as you are. They do not need someone who has unrealistic expectations of themselves because that places unrealistic expectations on them. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate you all. Remember, new episodes will be premiering every Tuesday at 5 a.m. EST on Spreaker. This is The Parent Solution. Remember, this is your one-stop shop for all things educational.